it in! As mentioned in my last Heat video, Jimmy Butler scores from absolutely everywhere, and his bucket getting proved to be adequately versatile and special in Game 1 at the Boston Garden to steal home court advantage. But this man could care less about what anybody thinks of him in his production. Post game after dropping 35 points, 7 boards, 5 dimes, and 6 steals, and asked about whether or not he thought this Miami miracle run was possible when they were facing Chicago back in the play-in, he said, quote, Damn right I did. Damn right we did. And the best part is, we don't care about what none of y'all think. We don't care if you pick us to win. End quote. Butler's I'm him mentality is precisely the mindset it takes from a player to have success on the biggest basketball stage there is in the association, making his mastery between the four lines that much more dangerous for the Celtics. Only controlled by his own narrative, Butler's not going to let anyone other than himself determine he and the Miami Heat's fate. With just the right blend of ego, flair for the dramatic, and poise, the Butler did it all last night by shocking the world leaving a dagger in the hearts of Jason Tatum and the Celtics' hopeful crowd with unfinished business, proving that he himself has work to complete in the form of capturing an eluding championship ring that he still never won in what's been an illustrious career. Make sure you stay tuned to see a breakdown of his Game 1 Masterclass and every reason for why Himmy's one-of-a-kind wizardry is special. Just 13% of you watching though are subscribed, so help your boy D-Flow reach 100k by splashing the sub box and leaving a thumbs up. Make sure to share this channel with a friend, and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter to stay even more updated on every video. Any bit of support is greatly appreciated. Back to the content. It's fun. Who's that? Oh, it's fun. The BAM set is amazing. Um, I think it's just great to be a part of this um, <clears throat> this this run he's been a part uh, on uh, since I don't know how long it's been now. It's been you know, but that's what he does. He's one of the best players in the world for a reason, and um, it's, it's just a joy to watch it. You know, and for a guy, he wants it so bad, and he works so hard at his craft. Um, it's important to you know enjoy his success, and you know he gives us all the, the confidence to be you know, successful and be aggressive and assertive. And that's what makes him special. And that he's not about all about him. It's about our group and our team and everyone else. When you have teammates like Toronto Raptor legend Kyle Lowry speaking so highly about the unselfishness of Jimmy like you just heard, you just know that Butler has the entire ear of this Heat locker room and coaching staff. He's evidently the guy that 1 through 15 everyone turns to. And that's exactly what a number one option in the association is required to be. Because if your go-to guy isn't also an unselfish leader that everyone in the locker room admires, your team is only going to reach a certain level. And Butler more than lives up to fulfilling that pairing of being both Dade County's top leader and first option. The reason I left that interview up from Lowry is because that's a guy in North Philly's finest who's been a champion, a six-time All-Star, and an All-NBA player throughout his career. Kyle knows what it takes to win, and that statement displayed that he knows this Heat team is capable of achieving the ultimate glory in 2023 based off the fact that they have such an admirably humble yet sharply focused killer between the lines who's ready to lead them to the promised land. Speaking of Lowry and the rest of this locked-in Eric Spolstra coached ball club, and whether it was Kyle, Bam, Struess, K-Love, Vincent, or Caleb Martin, everyone chipped into this well game plan for W in the opening game of this Eastern Conference Finals showdown, something fans in South Beach have become accustomed to, because fueling said fans in Miami to what they're currently witnessing and getting to look forward to day in, day out, the Heat were heavily counted out as underdogs, obviously without home court advantage in all three of the playoff series they've competed in, they would punctually capture home court advantage by winning all three game ones on the road in convincing fashion, winning their three series openers against Milwaukee, New York, and Boston by a combined 27 points to prove to not just their own supporters but the entire basketball universe that they had a bone to pick in terms of completing what they had merely come inches from achieving one year ago at this time. And based off this video from the Heat's locker room after making yet another increasingly typical Game 1 masterpiece, complacency, at least on the surface, doesn't seem like it'll factor in throughout the upcoming games of this series against Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics. Do what we're supposed to do. Okay. Okay. Care of business. Okay. Yeah, I'll say this too, man. That was a hell of a way to respond coming out of the half. Here was Jimmy, meanwhile, on the Heat's business, nonchalant, yet zoned-in approach post-game. If you go back all the way to that night against Chicago and the play-in, did you think then that something like this would be possible? Damn right. 
I did, damn right we did. Um, and the best part about it is we still don't care what none of y'all think, honestly speaking. Um, we don't care if you pick us to win. We never have. We never will. We know the group of guys we have in this locker room. Um, we know that Coach Bo um, puts so much confidence and belief in each and every one of us. Coach Pat as well. And so our circle's small, but this circle got so much love for one another. Um, we pump constant confidence into everybody. And we go out there and we hoop. We play basketball the right way, knowing that we always got a chance. Butler also displayed a clear lack of complacency, comfortability, satisfaction, whatever you want to call it. More than anything, we're staying together through the good and through the bad. Um, it is a game of runs, and we can talk to one another. I think that's what you know, ultimately makes me smile is the fact that when things aren't going our ways, we can look at each other eye to eye and uh, know when somebody's messing around and we can fix it. Um, I feel like we did a, a really good job on the defensive end. We shared the ball on offense, made some shots, got a win, but um, that's not a, enough for us and we want to get another one in two days. Going back to the Bulldog Kyle Lowry, and Jimmy's second dominant ball handler in the absence of Tyler Hero also touched on how the Heat may realize but don't take the outside noise in their quote-unquote small circle too seriously. Here was Kyle with the TNT crew on the outside noise surrounding this heat group regarding the fact that almost, if not everyone, was counting them out. I think we're aware of it, but we don't care. And that's just how we've been operating, you know, this whole playoff run. I know we're an eight, eight seed, but we're not the typical eight seed. We really don't care. We go out here and we do our jobs and we're prepared. Coach prepares us, the players prepare ourselves and we get shots up and we just, you know, we just work. That's the one thing about our, our culture is we just work no matter what. In terms of how this one played out, Coach Missoula opted to switch everything in the pick and roll to start this game and Butler just attacked downhill time after the next, getting either Rob Williams onto him in the opening half or smaller guards like Derek White onto him as the game progressed. There's a way in which Jimmy carves up defenses that makes him such an elite go-to weapon. He can dice up anyone put in front of him with pristine footwork, nasty stop and go turnarounds, elusive stop on a dime runners. Whether it was his own scoring repertoire, kicking it out to open marksman on the perimeter or dropping it off to Bam on the inside, the Celtics just had no answer. He was mixing up his bag perfectly. What you love about Jimmy is that unlike so many shot creators you'll see, he doesn't stop the ball. He never stops moving after he passes, first of all, but he doesn't over dribble. He's always decisive. He's never second guessing his decisions. And almost like a guy like Jokic, Jimmy's decisiveness keeps his teammates comfortable and confident. Down the stretch, Missoula would go to drop coverage on a few possessions, with his bigs playing high up in that drop, but Spolstra would respond to that by getting Jimmy clean looks in the post, and Jimmy would respond to that drop coverage by drawing multiple Celtic bodies with his gravity and finding open teammates like Adebayo, who was lurking wide open in the paint after Jimmy had drawn all that attention. But Missoula opted to always switch in the pick and roll when it was Vincent or another guard setting a screen for Jimmy, so he'd just get smaller defenders like Derek White or Malcolm out on an island, get deep drive entries, and shoot over the top. But I was most impressed by Jimmy's defense in this one. The man's got elite hands. He's so damn perceptive with how he can scope out the body language of offensive players. And Tatum and Brown were really bothered by his pressure and reactivity. Then he had the dramatic steal where he flew over like Superman to intercept the pass from Horford. The Celtics were just pressing. And simultaneously, Butler's attention to detail defensively was suffocating. Tatum was making lazy passes. Of course, he had those back-to-back -back travels to close out the game, but the passing lane awareness of Butler is just so damn elite that passes from Jason were just being easily scoped out and picked off. Rough moment one after the next in the clutch from Boston, with not much offense being run and poor defensive game planning from Boston as well, saw Missoula get outcoached by Spolstra and Tatum get outled by Jimmy.